I was reading Ezekiel chapter 18. And this is while Israel is in captivity. And God is telling them that you will not die in your father's sin. You will not bear their iniquity. But you will bear your own iniquity or your own righteousness. He's telling them that if you live a life just sins, iniquities, and, you know, things like doing terrible things to the poor, you're taking up usury, you're taking up bribes, you, you're not doing, passing good judgment. You, you, you know, you, you're doing all these things by bribes. You, you're living a life of wickedness. And if you don't repent, you will die in that wickedness. And if your son after you goes down in that same path, he will die in that same wickedness. But if he repents, if the father repents from his wicked ways before he dies, and he live a life of righteousness, then his wickedness will not be remembered. But he will die in his righteousness and he will live. He's not going to be going to hell. But if the son stays in his wickedness and dies like that, then, you know, he's going to die in his wickedness unless he changes. And he's saying, hey, Israel, you call me that I'm not fair. How, is, how am I not fair? I'm telling you that whatever you do is going to be based on what you do and no longer... It, is going to fall on. So and then he goes on to begging. He went to begging them and says, change from your wickedness, repent. So that way you won't die in them. He said, I have no pleasure in you dying in your wickedness. This is God, the maker of the universe talking. He says, I have no pleasure. That was verse 32 says, I, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Said the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live. From the Old Testament, he's, he never had any pleasure of us dying in our wickedness, in sinning, in serving other idols and, you know, sacrificing to them. And then it got me thinking that even through that, the Old Testament, how sinful the children have been. He still purposed. He said, okay, this is obviously not going to do. They just can't seem to save themselves no matter what way I've given them. Well, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another path for them to come to me. This is how desperate I am for them not to die in their foolishness, in their wickedness, in their sins. I'm going to send my son down there. And my son will be that sacrificial lamb. Because remember, they used to do sacrifice every year. The sacrificial lamb they had, you know, for their sins. Obviously, that was not working. It was still not working because they are still destroying themselves. They're still wicked. So he said, well, let me do another way. Let me do something else to show them how much I love them. I will send my son to be that lamb. He will go through trials. He will be beaten. He will be killed. And whosoever believe in him, in that son, in my son, will be saved. Their sins will be forgiven. He will be a light to them. He will be a savior. Whosoever believe in him and follow him, they will have that access to come face to face with me. He will be that sacrificial lamb that break that veil that separated God and men. Because it's sin that separate us from, from our Father. And Jesus came and, and, and was that, huh, that mediator. And Jesus, all he talked about was love. All he talked about was loving one another, loving God. The first couple te commandments is about love. And that's what Jesus came and taught. He came against every foolishness of the Pharisees. All their, you know, looking like they serve God, but really in their heart. Huh, 
Jesus came to prick their hearts. He came to destroy all that foolishness that's, that was in their heart. Not what you look like. Not how you look when you're fasting. But what's going on inside of you? What's going on in, in our hearts? And he came against every principality <laughs> that rise up against our God. He said, if you just believe in me, if you just believe in my son, you will be saved. God has no desire for people to perish. Here, even in the Old Testament, he was begging them to change their ways. Oh, he was begging them to change their ways because he don't want anyone to die in their foolishness. He don't want you to die serving idols because then you're truly dead in that. And he wants you, he wants us to live. Because if we walk in love, if you think about it, if we walk in love, we're not going to be defiling our neighbor's wife. We're not going to be killing our neighbor or, or stealing from them. If we walk in love, the first couple of commandments is about love. If we just keep those couple commandments, if we just practicing those few first commandments, the other ones are going to be easy to keep. We're not even going to try to think about the other ones. All we need to do is concentrate in walking in love. You're not going to serve idols if you walk, if you love our God with all your hearts and with all your soul. You're not going to sin against your neighbor if you love them as yourself. <laughs> You're not going to be stealing. You're not going to be doing all that. So really, if we just practice the first couple commandments, we'll be fine. So that was what God was putting in my heart and it's good that we repent daily. We stay humble before the Lord. No gossiping. You know, it doesn't profit anything. It doesn't uplift us. It doesn't uplift each other. It doesn't uplift another person to talk about them. You know, to blast them even though they did something wrong. You uplift them. You bring them up in prayer. You speak good on them. Not evil. You don't join other people. I mean, the Bible is so beautiful. The laws, the, 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 the Proverbs are so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It helps us so much. It is so, the whole Bible is so beautiful. God gives us a map on how we should live. And no one is perfect. No one is perfect. We all sin. We all fall short. <laughs> but he is so merciful. He is so merciful to forgive us. He is so willing and, and available and quickly. The Bible said that he is quickly to forgive and he is slow to anger. You have to go, you have to do a lot of anger, the father. But he is quickly to forgive because he wants none of us to die in our sins. That is not his heart. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have sacrificed his own son so that way we can come to him. That's as far as he went. And that's, that's the end of that. We don't have to, to, to sacrifice another goat. We don't have to sacrifice another lamb. Jesus is a sacrificial lamb. He is one in all. And that one will last forever. So we just go to him. We sin and we go to him. We, we repent. And we just walk in love. And if we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, oh my Lord. And he will guide us. And if we practice living in the spirit. Then the whole earth. Everything in the world would be much easier. Because our desire is of, uh, is of the spiritual things of God. And not what's going on in the world. I work in customer service at the moment. Helping a lot of people in you know, getting their self-employment or not self-employment, but getting their unemployment assistance, you know, from um, a state. And oh, the calls are so terrible. It, it breaks my heart because these people are going through so much and they put all their trust and their, in, their tr in their chariots, all their trust in their horses, which means of the things that they have, of the things that... Uh, on, on their property, on their jobs. 
They put all their trust in their un- income that they were receiving. And now th- those income have stopped and they're going through so much just to get help, just to get the the unemployment assistance, even though they paid into it, you know, 20 years, 19 years, they paid into that. And because so many people are filing, they're going through so much of lagging and now they, they run out of their savings. They, their children, they don't know what they're going to feed their children. They don't know what they're going to do the next day because they have no money. And the, 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 the assistance is slow in reaching them because so many people are applying, even though the government is doing a lot, but there's, they, we weren't prepared for this coronavirus. So I, I, I just pray for them, even though I can't pray on the line with them, but I just, I just lift them up. I just try and encourage them as best as possible. Some of them are calling crying because they don't know how to feed. Why? Because they put all their trust in that, in those things, in what was promised to them and not in the living God. Amen. So we need to stay humble and put our trust in our God because at the end of the day, everything can go out in a blast. Any, I don't care if you have a billion dollars in the bank. All it takes is for one thing to happen and you have no access to your funds. And then what? And because your trust that was not in God, now you're falling apart. But if your trust be in God and you lose everything that goes on in the world, well, you're not a loser because your trust is in him anyways. He, your trust was for him to take care of you and that's what your trust is still going to be. I know I went off subject, but let's stay encouraged and helping one another to be encouraged and walking in love. No more gossiping. You know, let us stay humble. We're not perfect. There's nothing in us that's good. Even though we may see that our sins are less than another person, that's in our own eyes. But in God's eyes, it may be a completely different story. So encourage one another and lift up another brother that is sinning, loving on that person. Show them the love of God. And it's not for us to gossip, to bad mouth people. That's not God. That's not walking in love. That is not the first couple commandments. Yeah. Stay blessed. Stay in the love of the Most High God and His Son, Jesus. Let His love rest upon you. (laughs) Let His love shower you. And don't be a selfish lover. Pass it on. Love love someone else. The same love that he's, he's, He's spreading on you. The same love that He is pouring on you. Do it. To another person that is in need. The fatherless. The motherless. The poor on the street. The the ones that need clothes. Don't pray for them. And you have clothes to give them. The Bible tells us. But give. You have to give. Give. Don't just say, oh, let me pray for you. And you have, you know, you know you can uh, be assistant to them. That's not biblical. And that's not love. Praying is good. But if you have to give as well, do that too. Let us walk in love. Again, stay encouraged. And be blessed in this wonderful day. Amen.